So here we have just a paint stick hanging off the end of the table. And what happens when I drop this golf ball from a few inches up on the end of it? The golf ball's weight is more than heavy enough to make it fly off the table. Now what happens if I take a regular sheet of 8.5 by 11 paper and fold it up and stick it on the end of the paint stick? There's a little bit of weight on that side. Now what happens if I drop it from just a few inches up? There's still plenty of mass in the golf ball dropping from a few inches up. It's going to make that piece of paper fly off of the end of the paint stick. So what happens now if I unfold that piece of paper and put it over the end of the paint stick and now drop the ball from a few inches? Any guesses? It dropped very slowly. And why do you think that is the case? I'm going to go ahead and do one more scenario here where I have another piece of paper that I folded neatly to fit the form of the paint stick. And now watch what happens when I drop the ball this time. You can see that it barely moved the paint stick before the golf ball fell off the end of the paint stick. So what's going on here? Well, What's going on is that when the golf ball hits the end, it wants to, you know, rock the paint stick off of the table, but it's also lifting the piece of paper up with it. And because it's lifting the piece of paper up with it rather quickly, there's air pressure pushing down on the top of the paper and there's not enough time for the air to rush in underneath the paper. And so it creates a suction force where the air pressure is able to push down on it and hold it down. And that is actually why this form works a little bit better than just a flat piece of paper, because with a flat piece of paper, there's some larger gaps here and it gives air a little bit better chance of sneaking underneath the paper. If you have kids, go ahead and give it a try at the kids and see what their predictions are going to be.